OK, guys, so we're going to get started here with the basis of this entire course, which is going to be using channels. Now, just so you know, I don't usually work like this, but I'm keeping it up just so you can see the red, green and blue channels. But there's a trick to this. A lot of you guys, if, if you're new to compositing like production level, you may have seen EXRs or heard of Cryptomat and especially Cryptomat because it's the new thing. And I'll show you just a very simple scene here to illustrate the whole point. And same thing with this. Now, a lot of you are probably used to, I don't know, let's say a PNG. OK, you're used to seeing it and you bring it in. You have all these channels. You have red, green, all that there. And then I don't have it, but you have an alpha. However, this is very misleading because with an EXR, we have the opportunity to take all of the passes of a renderer. Now, if you don't use 3D, I'll try to go over this, but basically the passes are the deconstructed images that make up what you see here. And I'll rebuild this simple scene. Very simple. So when I said it's sort of misleading, that's because you can't see all of the channels. And this is actually why the resolution is 1280 by 720, because I want to keep the file size down. I mean, my workstation's fine for this. I want it to be accessible for everyone. So I'm just going to show you something. Um, I'm not going to go into the plugins here. The next video I probably will, or I will. I just want to illustrate the point so it makes more sense. And just to get you used to how much clicking around we're going to do, because in After Effects, it's not that much fun and you kind of a lot of clicking. So you'll see. So I have this thing. I just called it AOV demo EXR. And here's the one plugin and it's free. So I'll have the links in there and everything. But here's this thing that says create pro EXR layer comps. OK, now these are all the actual channels. OK, you know, what? let's just click through them. And I'll go through the diffuse source. So the diffuse source is literally that. It's just the color. OK, so you're just seeing this is the color I chose. So it's not pure white, but it's sort of gray. And then um, I used the render I used was Redshift for this, and it's called a puzzle map. But this is basically just a material ID. Now, see, that's the thing that you can't see from the um, actual render, which is let's go back to the RGBA. So you can't actually see that they're separate materials, OK? And I have a shadow source here. And then here's the biggest thing and the one of the most powerful things. And right here, I just I just did spots on this in uh, Houdini, but I did a custom source. Now, I did this by taking particles and I just put it onto this guy. It's called Crag. And that's all I did. I put particles and then I said, wherever there's particles, just add like white and the rest will be black. And again, you wouldn't see that from any of this because you see how the red, green and blue, it's not showing up because it's its own separate channel. OK, now. First, I'm going to rebuild this very simple stuff with everything we have, then I'll show you why this is powerful. Now, this again, this is a super simple scene. OK, very simple, but it's going to really show you how powerful it is. OK, so I'm going to actually close out of all these I have space. You got to. Let's go to effects and we'll just go to red, green and blue. And we're just going to take this guy out. So it's just empty and then I'm just going to redo what I already did. So. And if you're wondering what uh, a sample or contact sheet is, it's just showing you all the little each little channel. OK. So just close that and we're going to bring down our diffuse source. OK, and we're going to bring down our shadow source. OK, now this is kind of misleading because a lot of people go add or multiply and you don't want to do that with the shadow. The shadow is the absence of light. So just make a new layer. Then bring this over here and. We're going to go ahead and add a track mat. Luma mat and guess what? So if I subtract that, there's nothing there. We just recreated this render. So there you go. Now, here's what the, why it's powerful. Very simple thing. 
I'm just going to do hue. And again, I'll give you a link to this. It's the effects console, I believe, from Video Pilot. It's just way easier. I have it mapped, so I press Shift Tab and I can just type in what I need. OK, so we're just going to do colorize. OK, so now. Here we go. Now, here's the thing. I don't have to go in and re-render it, OK? But we could still do something even more powerful. Remember this puzzle mat here? What we could do is we'll just separate it out, OK? And because it's a puzzle mat and we have this guy, we're going to go down here and we're just going to take, let's do layer, new, solid, we're just going to take this color, OK, from here. And this is where we're going to get into shifting of channels. So we're going to call this, and this is where it kind of gets annoying in After Effects because you have to duplicate it to make a whole new thing. So we'll call this one red. All right, let's try this red. And I apologize if my keyboard is loud because it is mechanical, so it's very clacky. OK, so that's green, so we're going to use that anyway. So let's just go in here, hit red. Now up here, you're going to see that things have their own channel. And I like to click this so I can see. So what we want to do is take this red channel, and we want the red channel to be the alpha. And you'll see all these. These are all of our channels in the EXR. So puzzle mat red. There you go. That's all we had to do, because all we're doing is we're saying we want to use the this red color as the alpha. So it's cutting it out. OK, and usually with puzzle mats, stuff like that, it's going to be red, green and blue. And you could have as many as you want, but you're going to have to make different channels. But I'm digressing, and I don't want to confuse you even more if you already are. However, let's do this. So because it's red, OK, and you see a little bit of green there, that's fine. Doesn't matter. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to do a track mat. And then we'll do alpha mat red, OK? So now let's do this. Now it's indistinguishable, OK? Ooh. But now that we have this, we could sit here and let's make him a turquoise. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. And then we're going to go ahead and on top of this layer, new solid, and we'll just make it purple. OK, now you can see the shadow is still there because it's still just on top. Now we're going to go ahead and take our custom source. OK. And we're going to use its luminance, which is the brightest part. I keep clicking the blank. So let's do Lumimat. And we have Sully thing, Crag guy. And then again, we're wondering now what happened to our hammer. So let's give him a green hammer, OK? And then we have to go into the green one, and we want to use the green channel, the puzzle mat green channel, because it's green, as the mat, OK? Turn that off, and then we'll do alpha mat green. Now, I know this is not <laughs> beautiful at all. However, you could see how it it could be really powerful, OK? Because the thing is, you don't have to re-render. You, you basically, again, you have everything from your render, all those layers, but you don't have to change it. Now, even here, you're like, oh, OK, the, the shadow, I don't, it's not, it's not looking good. Let's do a levels. Excuse my, bring it down. Now, again, I don't have to re-render anything. It's all set, OK? Now, let's go ahead and we're going to shut off everything. And then I'm going to replace 
our crag guy his body with a cryptomat. Now, cryptomat was made for, or was developed by PSYOP. Now, you're going to see there's nothing here, but there actually is. And again, this is another, another free plugin. It's the exact same one as the other, and it comes with it. But I think it's going off my screen, but I'm going to 3D channel and then cryptomat. Okay, now what's cool about this is that this is done in my render where it's a lot easier because it's a lot, it's a lot easier for both of us because the thing is in the my 3D program, I don't have to specify everything. I could just say if if it's a separate object or it has its own material on it, just to, it'll assign it its own color. And then when you're in compositing like here, like before you saw that I had to go in and select the, the red or green channel to select what I wanted. Okay, I don't have to do that. With Cryptomat, what you could do is you could go in and you could just click on stuff. So here I'm just right clicking with my mouse, okay? I'm going to colors and then I just want matte only. If go here, okay, so it's no, there. So now you can do it either way where you're using a luminance matte or the alpha, but I'm going to stick, I'm going to keep it to alpha because that's, it's already set on, but you can see it's doing the exact same thing as before. So there's no discernible difference. And I know the other one is, oh, wrong guy. I know the other one is the EXR is all crazy and stuff, but it really helps because what you could do is you could create new channels out of old ones. So we need it from another thing. You could start shuffling these things around to create stuff. But I think this really illustrates what we could do. If we don't like that, more pink, more green. There you go. And then layer new solid and do nice. Just the worst colors. And there you go. Now, again, you may want to rewatch this if I was going too fast. It's just, it's just it's a habit. And probably at the end of this, if it hasn't clicked, it will because we're going to get so used to going back and forth and me pre comping everything. And I'm not doing it here, but it's also why it's very, very important to label things, because if you don't, you're going to get lost. And I'm sure I'm still going to get lost anyways. So there you go. So I'm going to move on.